Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts. I had a viewer ask if I would demonstrate how I make my alphabet or letter templates for applique using Inkscape. And I would love to show you, so let's switch on over to Inkscape. Now here we are with the Inkscape software open, right? Upon default, you're gonna have a screen that looks just like this, right? There is a square in the middle of the page that's our sheet of paper, right? Uh, so let's first go up to file. Sorry, you're going to hear my cat running around. <laughs> file, document properties, and we're going to change the size of this piece of paper to U.S. letter size. Now, uh, if by chance you have legal size paper that you want to print on and your printer lets you print legal size paper, uh, you could choose legal size, right? That would change it to eight and a half by 14. And you could arrange your templates right on a legal size piece of paper. For this demo, we're going to use regular copy paper, U.S. letter size. So U.S. letter size. Now, before I close out this document properties box, as a quilter, I like to work in measurements of inches and not pixels, right? The default setting for Inkscape is working in pixels. So I want you to look right at the top of this box. We're going to change the default units from pixels to inches. There we go. I don't know if you saw the little ruler at the top of the screen change, but now we are working in inches. So now we have our uh, regular size piece of paper on the screen. I'm just going to take the wheel on my mouse. We're going to scroll up and give ourselves some space. Now let's say you have a block on your quilt that is, uh, let's see, how big do we want to make it? 16 inches wide. So I chose the Create Rectangles and Squares from the side menu and just drew a box here on the screen. We can go to this menu up at the top and we can change the measurements to 16, let's say 0.5, right? 16.5 inches wide is how big our block is going to be, how wide. And let's say it's going to be uh, 10 and a half inches tall, right? So let's change the height to 10.5. Now that is, in real inches, 16 and a half by 10 and a half. This is going to be our block that we're putting words on, right? So let's come over and let's choose our text tool. You'll look at the side menu and you'll click on create and edit text objects. I'll click on that and click anywhere on the screen. It doesn't matter where. And let's type, uh, what do we want to type? <laughs> uh, quilting is fun. There you go. I didn't pre-plan this video, so <laughs> uh, I'm just going to resize this really quickly. I'm going to click on the text, hold down the control button on my keyboard, and I'm going to grab one of these side arrows, and we're just going to make it a little bit bigger just for a second. Now, uh, the cool thing is you can make this any font that you have downloaded onto your computer. So with my letters selected, let's click back on the text tool and let's go up to this top menu and change the font. Let's pick something. Uh, let's scroll up. <laughs> I have so many. Here you go. I just passed one that I liked. Where did it go? Here we go. This this font is called KB2 Lovers. Let's check that out. There you go. KB Lovers. KBT Lovers. There you go. So there is our font. Let's just move it up top here for a second because uh, with the text tool, you can bring in your letters a little bit closer. See that? And 
And then uh, the box right next to it, you can increase the space between your words. Like that. Now let's bring it and see how it fits within this box. That looks pretty good, but let's make them a little bit taller like this, right? There you go. So let's say we're done editing the text of um, what we want to say on our quilt, right? Um, we can click on these letters and we want to separate them all. <laughs> My cat is gonna be going nuts. Um, at this point, they are a font, right? And we want to separate them so we can arrange them onto our sheet of paper for printing. So with them selected, you see the little box around them. We're going to go to the very top menu and we're going to choose path and object to path. Then while it's still selected, I want you to come over, hover over your letters and right click on your mouse and scroll down to you see ungroup. When you do that, you're going to notice a little individual box around each one of your letters now. So now you can move these letters around. Whoopsies. You can move each one of the letters around, right? So let's scroll all the way out so that you can see our quilt block and the sheet of paper. Now we're going to have fun arranging. Let's just move them all closer to the page. There we go. Now you're going to arrange your letters within this piece of paper so that you can print them out and trace them with either your freezer paper or your fusible products like Heat and Bond Light, Steam Seam, Wonder Under, The goal is to fit them all on the page, but you also want to stay away from the edges or the margins of your paper, right? Usually it's about a quarter of an inch, maybe. You don't want to put your letters right on the edge of the paper because uh, your printer needs those margins to feed the paper through the printer. So we're just getting them all fitted right in there. So there you go, they're all fitted on your sheet of paper. Now, uh, these are right side up versions of each one of the letters, right? Which is great for, oh, sorry, freezer paper applique. But let's say uh, you wanna make a mirror image of your letters so that you can easily use uh, like heat and bond light. So let's select all of them, and on my uh, keyboard, I'm going to hit Control D. That's Control D, duplicate. We've made a copy of them. I want to group these all together, so I'm going to hit Control G, group them together. And then on this menu right here at the top, the bottom of the top three menus, we're going to flip selected objects horizontally. And that has given us a mirror image we can trace with fusibles, right? Uh, so the next thing you want to do is go ahead and save this as a PDF document. So we're going to go File, Save As. Let's put this on the desktop. Let's call it a Word Demo. We're going to change the save as type to a PDF. You've seen me do that several, several times if you've watched any of my Inkscape videos. And then when this box pops up, we just always say OK. So now we can close this out and we can open up our Word demo document. And here is our letters. Just like this, I'm going to go ahead and print them. Eight and a half by 11. Okay, we're good. Uh, I like to make sure to choose actual size. And then we're going to print. Let 
Let me go grab that off the printer. So here we go. Here is our templates, right? Right side up for freezer paper applique. Mirror image for fusible applique. And the awesome thing is, is they are true to size. So we know that this is going to fit within our 16 and a half by 10 and a half inch quilt block, right? And uh, we're ready to start tracing and cutting out our letters for our projects. Now this is great for quilts, for other sewing projects like totes, pillowcases, putting it on shirts, all kinds of things, right? Any way that you would use applique. You can design your own words with Inkscape. So I hope that this has answered some questions. As always, if you're playing around in Inkscape and you have questions, comment down below and uh, I would love to try and help. Thanks for watching. Bye.